Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is another pleasant Sunday smoke. March 29th, I believe, is the date, and that date has some significance because I was looking back through one of my old journals, and I was trying to remember when I had quit smoking cigarettes, and I looked back and found the entry, the slightly perturbed, shaky-handed entry that I had put on March 29th. That was the very first day that I quit smoking cigarettes. So it's been exactly a year since I quit. And obviously, you know, I smoke a pipe now, but when I originally quit, I just quit cold turkey and I didn't touch any nicotine at all for about a month, month and a half or so. because, and I had smoked a pipe occasionally, you know, even when I was smoking cigarettes, but I didn't touch anything for a month and a half because I wanted to prove to myself that I didn't need the nicotine at all. And I kind of had that in the back of my mind that it wouldn't be all that difficult to quit cigarettes because I'm not the addictive type. I've never really used any substance habitually and anything. I've always said that I'm immune to drugs because I've tried things. Eh, you know, come on, we've all tried things, haven't we? and uh, had, had some good times on some substances occasionally, but I always sort of felt like, eh, anything I tried, it always just seemed like it didn't really do all that much. And if I compared the way I seemed to be affected by the substance to the way other people around me seemed to be affected, they always seemed to do far less to me than they did to other people. So I think I just, I don't know, genetically, whatever, I don't have a predisposition to want to take substances all that much. And so with smoking, I quit cold turkey. The first week was kind of tough, and then after that it wasn't that big of a deal. And I think I did sort of prove to myself that the smoking habit that I had for years, and I smoke quite a bit, I smoke like a pack and a half a day, sometimes two packs a day, had more to do with hand-to-mouth, sort of fidgety, um, just kind of repetitive motion sort of thing, helping me concentrate. If I'm doing something with my hands, that I don't have to think about. It helps me focus on other things. So anyway, that seemed to be the main root of my cigarette smoking. And the reason I quit, I enjoyed smoking and I didn't really have any plans on quitting anytime soon, but the last couple years in the winters, it's very cold and damp here. Well, not very cold, but definitely very damp um, in Western Washington, Pacific Northwest during the winter months. And the last couple winters, I had started having horrible joint problems in my fingers primarily, but a little bit in my toes as well, just in my extremities. And I think I'll post a picture in this video and you can see, especially my right index finger, the joints swelled up so badly that I could barely move it at all. And it was two to three times the size of my left finger. It was very, very bad. And then other joints and different fingers would be affected and get better or worse. It was all kind of variable. And then basically I knew that smoking is very bad for your circul circulation. You don't get as enough blood flow to the extremities. And so even though I never even went to the doctor for these joint problems, I figured I was too young to have osteoarthritis. Maybe it was some sort of rheumatoid arthritis or something that had been brought about by the smoking, the lack of circulation. And so I figured I'm going to quit. And this was right at the height. It was like in March of last year and it was still really bad. And I said, I'm going to quit. And if it improves, then I won't smoke cigarettes ever again. If it does not improve, then maybe I will smoke cigarettes again. And of course the weather started getting warmer and drier. And so the pain went away anyway, which it did the previous year and the year before that as well. But then we got into winter this year, and even though it wasn't as cold here as it has been the last few years, um, still very damp and still some below freezing temperatures. Never had a problem with it. There was little slight twinges in the joints every once in a while, but basically it's been perfectly fine. And so I'm assuming that that has a lot to do with not smoking cigarettes. And just in general, like any girl who's ever slept in my bed can attest to the fact that my hands used to be freezing cold. If I ever, you know, in the night reached over, there would be a shriek. And now that is not the case. Um, just in general, I never noticed a huge um, problem in terms of lung capacity or anything like that when I smoke cigarettes. But I definitely, I've always liked to sing and I can definitely 
sing, I can hit the high notes a little easier than I used to be able to. Um, my lung capacity is higher. And uh, just in general, when I used to get colds and things in the past, they would often turn to bronchitis. That doesn't happen now. Just generally feel quite a lot better than I used to. And smoking a pipe now, I don't inhale, so I'm not taking particulate and hot smoke into my lungs. That's obviously a bad thing to do, to inhale smoke into your lungs. And so I got away with it for quite a few years. And uh, now I'm enjoying myself. I don't miss smoking at all, uh, smoking cigarettes at all. I much prefer the pipe. And I'm glad I made the change. Hopefully this finger joint health will continue, but it just seems like you know, the vasorestrictive quality of cigarette smoke in your lungs can't be good for you. And it seems to have improved quite a bit. So that's one thing. It's one year anniversary of quitting smoking cigarettes. A couple other things to talk about. Something that I was really annoyed about. I don't know if you guys have been following this story at all, but if any of you are Top Gear fans, the UK BBC version of Top Gear, the only re version really worth watching in my opinion, I'm not a car guy, really, but I just love that show, and I've loved it for years. I find it really, really entertaining, in spite of the fact that there's these paunchy middle-aged weirdos bickering, and so, so many of the segments and everything are so obviously contrived. I still found it hilarious. I love that show. And if you know anything about what's been going on in the news lately, I'm sure my UK viewers are definitely aware of this. Jeremy Clarkson, the main personality behind this iteration of Top Gear, the main driving force behind the show, was fired by the BBC this week. He was let go, his contract was not renewed, he apparently punched an Irishman, and who hasn't punched an Irishman? I mean, come on. Um, and he was a producer of the show, though, and so this caused a bit of a ruckus, and he was let go. Now, obviously, there you, you can't be punching your producers, but this is the most popular show in the world, or at least the most popular non-fiction show in the world, I believe, and makes BBC a lot of money, even though BBC is supposed to be not-for-profit. They have an international like distribution arm and everything, and merchandising, and all these things, live shows and stuff, and so they are shutting down a huge franchise because this show is not going to be top gear without Jeremy Clarkson and James May and Richard Hammond, and who knows if they will continue without him. From what the comments that James May was making, it seems maybe that's not likely. But I was quite irritated to see him go. And I was annoyed because they were right in the middle of a season. I think seven episodes had been aired. And I don't know if it was March 10th or something like that when the allegations came out or when this surfaced that he had gotten into this altercation. They suspended him. And the last three episodes that were supposed to air this season have never aired, probably will never air. Quite irritating to me. I love that show, and I look forward, anytime a new series is going to begin, I'm always very happy. It's kind of my Sunday night ritual to sit back and watch Top Gear, so quite annoyed about that. Um, the only other thing, I'm trying to think of other things, updates to do, oh, I have this as a visual aid. I've recorded my review of Dunhill's The Royal Yacht, and this will post at some point this week. Um, just fair warning, not my favorite. Not my favorite Dunhill blend. So those of you who really like The Royal Yacht, and you're hoping for some sort of affirmation of your views on the tobacco, you might be annoyed if you watch my video. Um, but please don't take it personally. It's just my own opinion, it's my own taste. But just as a little preview to the review. I don't, I don't hate it or anything, but it's definitely not my favorite Dunhill blend. I'm also expecting an estate pipe that I got off eBay. It was a Peterson Deluxe grade, one of the higher grade Peterson pipes, and it's a very classic billiard shape. And I won the auction quite some time ago, but it's coming from Germany. I expected it last week, never came. There's tracking, but it doesn't really tell me anything. It's from Deutsche Post, and I don't know. I don't read German, and even when you translate it, it's gibberish. And so, I, I don't know if they put it on a steamship or something to make the Atlantic crossing, but it's taking a very long time. But hopefully that will come this week, and then I can show you the pipe. 
I, it's hard to tell from the photos. It seems like it's in pretty good shape, but it might need kind of the deep cleaning. So this might be an opportunity for me to show you maybe if the bowl needs to be reamed, sanitizing the mouthpiece, maybe if there's a ghost of old tobacco, I could show you the salt treatment, things like that. I guess it just depends on the condition the pipe is in when it, when it comes, but I'll definitely do some sort of video showing you the pipe and if necessary, cleaning it up, reconditioning it, and then smoking it for the first time. So I'm looking forward to that quite a bit. I've really liked the classic billiards lately, and even though the Peterson one has a P-lip on it, like this kind of stem, by the way, I'm smoking my little Peterson 20S deluxe system pipe. Um, it's still a very, very classic billiard shape with a tapered stem and kind of a Dunhill Group 4 size bowl. So I'm looking forward to that quite a bit. But I think that's about it for Sunday Smoke this week. I've got some things that I'm going to hold over till, till next week, because I think this one has gone a little long. But thanks again, everyone, for watching. Thanks again for all your comments and for subscribing. I really appreciate it. But until next week, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. And this has been Stuff and Things. Good day.